Hey, and welcome back to another Turtle Tuesday. So if the opening bump didn't give it away, our arcade aesthetic should. We're gonna be doing something tied into a video game today. So our Turtle product is gonna be inspired from the Turtles arcade machine you see on my left here. Uh, so the Turtle market has really exploded in recent years in terms of products availability. Uh, growing up, we had Playmates. And that was it. Uh, they're still around. They're still doing turtle stuff. But now we have NECA. We have Super 7. We have crossovers within those lines as well. And we have the Loyal Subjects, which is what we're going to be looking at today. And I'm always like looking for something different because you're just not going to collect it all unless you, you have the money to collect it all, which is a lot. So today, looking at something a little bit different, a little bit um, arcade inspired, is the recent released Comic-Con exclusive uh, Walmart joint release, the Loyal Subjects Bebop and Rocksteady with Arcade Battle Damage. Uh, if you recall from the game, these are the first two bosses you fight in the game, uh, Rocksteady and then Bebop. And as you start to beat them up in those old Konami-style arcade games, they turn that uh, pink and red flashing colors. So that's what kind of inspired this, this product. So it's kind of cool to have that sort of element. I uh, haven't seen that yet. We've seen arcade characters from NECA capturing uh, turtles and turtles in time. But I don't think we've seen anything quite like this. So why don't we take a look, starting with the box, and then delve in and check out these figures. So like I was saying, this was kind of an eye-catching um, reveal when this was announced prior to Comic-Con. Uh, you can see right there in the front the artwork of the captures of the characters from the game and all their, I guess, 8 or 16-bit glory there for the original arcade game. Uh, on the back, a couple of uh, quotes. Um, I don't think both of them were in the game, but they did talk in that, in that original game. Fun little detail in the corner there where it talks about 31 points. That's just how you kind of kept score. Every time you defeated an enemy, you get a point. Uh, and they used that to highlight the amount of articulation on these characters. That was a nice little tie-in to the package. Of course, you got those 8-bit uh, skyscrapers that were from the opening scene of the game, too. So that's just kind of great that they drew some of that aesthetic from the game and captured it onto the package, particularly capturing the um, characters uh, screen grabs from the, the game itself to just throw onto the packaging, just sort of making it pop a little bit more. Um, even if you just wanted to keep them in the package, I think it's, it looks pretty great. Uh, but of course you want to open this thing, so let's take a look at the inside. Some fun details on the packaging here. They have the scene in the background here where you first encounter Bebop in the game. So that's kind of nice, even in its um, old digitized glory there. So that's great, a little pixelated. Uh, the cards and the figures here in their pixelated appearance as well. That's kind of fun. So some just great details in the box, a little extra mile. Uh, nothing holding the figures in. I, I never liked struggling getting figures out. So this is pretty cool. So um, this is kind of a weird little touch, but on the back it says SDCC 22 on his, uh, his sheath for his, I guess, machete here. So I guess they really wanted to make it clear that these were SDCC figures. Uh, I don't recall him using the knife in the game, but I guess it's just kind of a background piece. Um, this is also probably based on the mold of their standard release, uh, Rocksteady. So just has this knife here in the back. Uh, this was in the game, his good old rifle here. Uh, so that's great that they included that as well. Um, the articulation is pretty nice on these guys here. They got the double elbows. I see double knees on them. Ankles just kind of turned. It's not a ball ankle. Uh, the arms turn here. Great articulation on the head. Now, they included an alternate head for him. Uh, he, I don't recall him transforming the game. I just think this was, again, because of the standard release. So they have that in there. And, of course, some human hands in here as well um, just a little bit smaller and not as uh, scaly as the rhino hands you can see a little detailing on the rhino hands we'll get some up close shots that sort of differentiate there you have an extra pair of rhino hands as well uh, always like doing nick's uh, nick's arm or hand test here to make sure that these are easy to do i've never um, tried any of the loyal subjects before so i'm not sure what to expect here 
but I always like to do a, a twisting motion as I work the arm out just to make sure it doesn't end up breaking the wrist joint. And okay, so this comes out nice and easy. The joint is attached to a little peg here. Same with the new one, we're gonna pop in. And that goes in, not really any trouble at all. So that's nice to see that you can move this easily. There's a little joint in the hands here so they have a little flexibility to them. Um, again, pops out, pops in, really no fuss. That's great. Uh, let's see how well he holds his accessory. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, he doesn't have any articulation. There's a little bit in the arm here, like a ball joint in the shoulder. He's not going to be able to really get a nice two-hand grip on that thing just because the arms don't really let you flex across. And I've seen this with a lot of six-inch figures. Uh, he's roughly that scale. It might be it might be five-inch. It's kind of hard to tell. And it's sort of when you go from brand to brand, the reason they're allowed to have a license is because they either go one-inch bigger or one-inch smaller. It's kind of a weird loophole. Uh, so he can't really do that articulation. Very few figures I've seen allow you to do that cross articulation. Uh, Beast Kingdom has that in their characters and 3-0, but uh, not here, which is fine for for this guy. It's still pretty cool to have him hold his little gun here. So put him there. And now we'll take a look at Bebop. So Bebop, to me, was a little harder than Rocksteady in the game. Not sure what the reason for that was. Uh, but uh, it could have been his blaster that had the sonic beam waves emitting from it just knocked you across the screen more. Um, but I always found him tougher in the arcade than Rocksteady. So Bebop, of course, got his little um, mohawk here. He's got his rat tail in the back, the, the shell shoulder armor. He's got his bandolier, and he's got a little necklace that isn't attached, so it's kind of free-floating there. That's a nice little detail and layering. So is the bandolier. That's not molded onto him. Neither is the vest. So this is great. Just gives the character a little bit of depth. Um, that's great. The, there's detailing on the shoelaces on his shoes, so that's kind of cool too. And he's got those chains pretty much everywhere all over his arms uh, and his waist. And then, of course, his signature shades. Uh, these are kind of molded, but they look like they're sort of separate, so that's nice as well. Uh, he has, just like Rocksteady, has the alternate head, which I don't recall from the game, so again, that's probably just thrown in because it was with the standard release. And then he's got some Warthog hands and the human hands, which are a little bit smaller. He comes with his little knife here. Again, didn't use it in the game, but he did use this little drill gun here, which... We'll see if that fits easily enough in the hand. Um, with a little manipulation, it does. Uh, this one is not a two-handed weapon, so you don't really need to worry about being able to use that cross function. So that's kind of great. It's good. They both got their arcade-accurate weapons, which were sort of their signature weapons on the show anyway, so that makes sense. Uh, let's see what we got here. This looks like... Uh, oh, it's a shield. Okay, I can't recall this, again, if he used this in the game. I don't think he did, but it's a nice little inclusion. Again, it has that SDCC 22 logo on it, um, so just a little bit extra for Bebop here, so they both have their unique logo. And then the last accessory is a um, BST AXN little, I guess it's a foam decal or something. I think it's just meant to be on the tray. I don't think it's an actual accessory here. Um, but so yeah, they have a couple alternating hands, a couple alternate heads, just to give you a little more agency with the figures. But these are their base figures as they appeared in the game. So why don't we give you a close up of these guys so you can really check out these great details. They are in their back to back action pose or I guess Property Brothers promo pose where they're down in the corner of your screen back to back. Uh, so, like we were saying, uh, they have a bunch of extra accessories that didn't really make an appearance in the game, but wanted to show off their look a little bit more here. It's cool that they, they included these. It uh, kind of completes your uh, arsenal for Bebop and Rocksteady. They have a standard release in the loyal subjects of Bebop and Rocksteady, and they all come with these figures too. So these are just kind of a repaint, um, a SDCC exclusive. So it's a way to take these characters and make them kind of unique and stand out, which I really appreciate because in this overcrowded turtle market, you really got to do something to stand out. And these 
definitely stand out among the other figures in the line to do something really niche like uh, arcade damage coloring. Likewise, including them with the alternate heads also in that battle damage, that's kind of fun too. So I'm glad they did it. It wasn't really necessary, but it's probably part of their standard line anyway. And that, that extra detail of having human hands and not just changing the heads really uh, shows that they took care when including that set um, as part of it and just really acknowledge that they understand the product and understand what these guys would look like back in human form. So it's a nice touch. Again, really glad this set got made. With so many turtle options out there, it's nice to see an homage to the Konami game um, with this very unique sort of coloring structure on them. I know we got other turtles and turtles in time figures out there already, but this is kind of a unique set, which is really appreciated and helps them stand out with all the other turtle products out there. Um, if you're a fan of the Konami game, which I am, and it's arguably one of the best, if not the best, beat em up games ever made, uh, then they're fit perfectly in any setting that you have, but particularly if you already have the RK 1UP cabinet or the original cabinet. Uh, I'm probably going to display them in this room somewhere as well because they just look great and they pair well with the game. I say these guys are ready to go crush some turtles, but given their color scheme, they already didn't fare so well, so they're about ready to pass out at this point. Uh, you can still grab this set on walmart.com. We'll put up a link for it. It retails for about $40 which isn't bad because I think these normally go for about $20 a piece. Um, ton of accessories with them, alternate heads, uh, alternate hands. The heads were rather difficult to get on and off and that might just be because you sort of need to wear them in a little bit. Uh, some twisting and some pressure will get those to pop off but they were not as easy as the hands. Um, but you're likely not to be changing them as much as you're changing the hands so not a major uh, throw off. And, Honestly, I'm just going to keep them like this because this is how they appeared in the game. So um, not a bother for me at all, but it's nice to have a little bit more options with your figures if you're displaying them. But again, they really kept true to the color scheme from the game, as you can see in the box art. And it's just really nice to be able to capture those details and have something like that if you're a Turtle Arcade enthusiast. So that's all we have for today. Um, we'll have more uh, Turtle Tuesdays in the future, none in the immediate future, but we will likely have another one next month, so tune back. Uh, so like, subscribe, and follow, and stay tuned for more toy reviews. And until then, we'll see you.